Well, happy Monday morning, everybody. Hope you had a great weekend. Today we are beginning our devotional reading through the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. So go ahead and be opening your Bible there. Uh, those of you who follow this regularly know that we're on vacation in Europe. I pre-recorded this devotion, and uh, this afternoon we should be landing in Prague in the Czech Republic, which is six hours ahead of Rock Hill, so landing kind of mid-morning in uh, Rock Hill. And I er, ask you, if you want to, if you'd like to, you're welcome to follow me on Instagram so you can see some pics from our vacation and just follow us over the next couple of weeks while we look at several cities in, uh, in Europe. All right, today we're in chapter 1, 2 Thessalonians, and, 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 and I want to say something that's sort of a follow-up on a couple of comments last week about the second coming because chapter 1 talks about the, the second coming of, of Jesus. And remember I said, and, and those of you who've heard me teach and preach for years know this, that I do not believe the New Testament teaches there is a rapture followed by a seven-year tribulation and then the second coming of Jesus. I just don't find that anywhere in the New Testament. In fact, I find just the opposite. And um, 2 Thessalonians 1 describes the deliverance of believers from persecution and the judgment of the Lord on the lost and those who persecute his people, both of which take place at the same time at the second coming, or in this passage, the revelation of Jesus Christ. So, Look at what he says starting at verse 6. In the opening verses, he's talked about their faithfulness enduring persecution. Verse 6, For after all, it is only just, it's only right, for God to repay with affliction those who afflict you. God is going to judge and punish those who persecute his people. Verse 7, And to give relief to you. It's only right that God judges those who hurt his people and gives relief to you, to me, to us, to his people. Gives relief to you who are afflicted and to us as well. Paul talking about himself. When the Lord Jesus will be revealed from heaven. So when Jesus is revealed from heaven, when Jesus comes from heaven, his second coming, two things he says are going to happen. We will be not only delivered from that affliction, we will be comforted and delivered from it, and those who afflicted us will be repaid. They will be judged. And notice he says here in verse 7, Give relief to you who are afflicted and to us as well. When the Lord Jesus will be revealed from heaven, his second coming, with his mighty angels in flaming fire, a picture of judgment, dealing out retribution. When he comes back, dealing out retribution to those who do not know God and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These will pay the penalty. And then he talks about that penalty. And, and, and the greatest, the, the worst part, I should say, the worst part of that penalty at the end of verse 9 is they are removed from the presence and from the glory of God and his power. Verse 10, when he comes to be glorified in his saints on that day, and to be marveled at among all who have believed. So what is he saying? He says, when Jesus comes back, when Jesus is revealed from heaven, one event, in that same event, at that same time when that happens, we, his saints, will marvel at his glory and we will be delivered from our affliction, from our persecution in this world and in this culture. And those who persecute the people of God, as well as those who don't believe the gospel, will be judged. Not two events, not, not a rapture in which we're delivered. And then later, seven years later, he comes and deals out. No, same time. It's, it's clear. It's so, it's so crystal clear. And if people would stop taking fanciful ideas they get from some obscure passage in the Old Testament and forcing those ideas onto what is so clearly taught in the New Testament, when they stop doing that, this becomes so easy to read and understand. I look forward to Jesus coming and rescuing us. But the devotional thought, the devotional thought is scary. It's really scary. Because look at what he says happens to all those who are not ready. 
as he talked about in the last chapter of 1 Thessalonians, who are asleep and are of the night and of the darkness and caught unprepared when Jesus comes back here, he says, they'll experience the retribution of God, the penalty of eternal destruction from the presence of God. That doesn't mean they cease to be or are annihilated. It's that they're suffering outside the presence of God. And we know elsewhere in the Bible, in the New Testament, that's in hell. They're suffering because they're separated from the presence and the glory of God. That suffering is eternal. What does that mean? The people you love who won't follow Jesus, that's their future. And that should break your heart and scare you to death. And so there shouldn't be a day past when we don't pray for our loved ones, our neighbors, our friends, our co-workers, our classmates. There should not be a day past that we don't pray for them to be saved. And every opportunity we have to invite them to church, we should invite them. And every opportunity we have to share a testimony, to share what God's doing in our lives, to try to talk to them about Jesus, we should take it because we don't want anybody we care about to experience what we just read. But don't delude yourself. Do not delude yourself. If they don't follow Jesus, that's their future. And that's the word of the Lord today. I'll see you tomorrow as we uh, look at chapter two. God bless you, everybody.